Hey guys, welcome to Ultimate Survival Tips. I'm David. It's good to be back with you as we get into our survival quick tips training for this week. This is episode number 13. Last time in episode number 12, we discussed seven survival food skills you need in a disaster. Today, we're gonna break down six survival trapping tips to grow your survival food stash in an emergency. But before we get into this topic today, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get notified when we post every video in this important training series. And if you wanna see our line of four new MSK1 knives for this year, go check out ultimatesurvivaltips.com. All right, let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to this edition of Survival Quick Tips, which is part of the Tiny Survival Guide Learning System and our full Tiny Survival Masterclass online training. In this segment, what David and I will be doing is taking a few minutes to break down a vital emergency preparedness or survival topic that's found in the Tiny Survival Guide, Amazon's number one pick for EDC survival guides. And along the way, what we'll be doing is sharing a few action steps that you can put into practice today. All right, everyone. So today, what we're going to be doing is referencing section L, which is survival trapping skills in the Tiny Survival Guide, as we take you through five survival trapping tips for disaster and emergency food preparedness. Let's get started. Can you tell us what trapping is and what trapping is not? Trapping is a way of gathering food sources, primarily small animals in a survival situation. And you're going to have to employ some practice. You're going to have to have some skill. And it's always good to train with a mentor or somebody that already knows what they're doing before you need it in a survival situation. All right. So next, tell us why trapping is an effective way to get food in a survival situation. Well, there's several good reasons. Number one, you don't have to put as much energy into it as you would in a hunting situation. You can actually set your traps in a downtime while you're at your shelter and effectively build them and then take them out. So it's easy for, particularly for survival trapping to make a lot of the materials from what it is that you find around you. You don't have to carry a bunch of stuff with you, although I do recommend that you carry some things with you when you can. And they're also very effective. Traps can be made with little skill. With a little skill and a little practice, you'll be able to make them. And it's important for you to get out and utilize your knife because bushcrafting, camp crafting, uh, survival crafting with a blade or an axe are all skills that you're going to be utilizing to effectively make traps. So it's just a good reason to get outside and practice right and the other beautiful thing here is once you set a trap you can leave it and go back to it and check them usually twice a day because you want to check your traps so that they are as humane as possible as far as trapping is concerned it's always worthwhile to note that there are requirements and laws that you should follow for proper game management in where in the area in which you live typically if you can contact somebody at your fishing game or natural resources office they can help you find mentors for trapping as well as make sure that you're following the necessary laws so that you can trap on your own and start gathering food now and doing it properly okay now let's go through these six trapping tips all right let's just start with <clears throat> how can we increase our chances and Emphasis on the word chances. The big thing is in trapping is it's not just indiscriminate. You want to be going after, much like a hunting situation, you want to set up traps in a style and in a location to catch a particular species of animal. So the more you know about the game that you're going off, uh, the more you know about the game that you're going after, the better off you're going to be. Trapping is a numbers game. What do we mean by that? Trapping is more beneficial to you than hunting for example because you can set several traps and it doesn't require a lot of resources and again you can just stay at camp and stay where your shelter is to make those happen effectively one of the things that you can do to increase the statistical likelihood that you'll be successful is to bait the traps the way you need to as well as you can funnel animals into them as well and so all these things uh, in addition to setting numerous traps makes it a numbers game so it's easier to catch critters okay let's just talk real quick about where to set your traps what are just some general rules of thumb that can increase our chances well again one thing the first thing is knowing 
behavior of the animal you're trying to catch. So if you know all animals are just like us, they need shelter, water, food. And so they're going to go to and from those resources just like we do on a regular basis. They're on a more of a schedule than we are. And so typically by knowing animal behavior can set your traps where they're likely to be. With that said, getting out and studying some tracking, that's T-R-A-C-K, not T-R-A-P-P, studying some tracking, you can know what animals are in an area, and that way you can bring them to you, and that'll be more beneficial by where you set your traps up because you know the mammal behavior, or you know their their wildlife corridors, you know their burrows, you know what kind of nest they have, and all the things that go along with them with that sort of knowledge. Yeah, and different traps are preferable for different types of animals. So you really need to know what you want to trap to even match that up with the right functioning machine, which we call a trap. Baits and lures. How about some general thoughts or rules of thumb there? The first thing on all bait is the animal that you're trying to catch. What kind of food do they eat? And whatever that food that is, then utilize that as bait in the trap. Scat is another example of a a common calling card, if you will, for wild animals. So if you put scat from one animal near a trap, it'll bring other animals nearby so they can check it out, see what's in it. And uh, again, they'll smell that and try to get information. And then at the same time, any sort of anything, whether it be a dead animal or something of that nature that has an odor, will bring animals to it to check it out. That doesn't mean that as you put a dead animal down, you put the trap right next to it, you might move it out along a burrow or a corridor or something of that nature, and that animal will come and check it out because they're inquisitive, trying to figure out what killed that animal or what caused harm, and that way you set yourself up for success. An interesting bait that works with <clears throat> various different scavengers and even Uh, Some fish, especially bottom feeders, is meat or chum. And basically when we say chum, as far as fishing goes, it's kind of like the innards that are left over, right, Craig? And and that's right. That's a. It's not something you're going to eat, but it's left over, and it's something that you can use as far as a scent uh, use for a bait. Yeah, that's a fantastic bait for sure. Okay, check traps often and from a distance. What do we we mean by that? By you that? know, from my perspective, that's done to keep things ethical as best you can, so that you can practice and do this right. But at the same time, the more an animal stays in the trap, the more likely it is to figure a way to get out of it. And therefore, you want to check your traps as often as you can. Again, at minimum of twice a day. And you want to do that. And hopefully, you'll get you get rescued before then, right? But at the same time, you want to check those traps in such a way that you're getting to them so that you can get that fresh food source instead of one that is aged too long stuck in a trap. All right, I'm going to throw in a bonus tip, and let's just see what you say here, Craig. Uh, trapping, we're talking mostly about wilderness situations. Would trapping be an effective means for uh, getting food in an urban situation? Mm, that's a tough subject to talk about, David, but I think it's you have thrown me a curveball here. There's animals in an urban setting, but in urban settings, things like mice and rats are oftentimes full of bacteria problematic to eat so if you're going to trap something like that and eat it you're going to have to basically burn it to till it's black before you eat it just to ensure that you get any bacteria that's on it cooked off so the other thing that you can catch is other animals that are not typically food for you and you can creatively think your way through that process and i think you can come up with a good answer All right, what are some dangers, some things that people need to be aware of when they set out to do some trapping? For survival trapping, you need to be catching small animals. You don't want to go after a big animal. You don't want to catch a deer in a trap and then try to bring that thing down because that thing will kick your butt. Uh, You don't want to be trying to trap critters that have a track that's bigger than yours because that is a big animal. And so that's not the type of animal that you want to be trapping for survival. Again, we're going after small animals, rabbits, squirrels, raccoons, and stuff of that size. Okay, everyone, we are out of time for this survival quick tip segment. But in a moment, Craig and I are going to continue this conversation and we're going to share some exclusive content for our tiny survival masterclass students that's going to include five essential simple traps we all need to know so guys and gals if you want access to that and who doesn't because that's really good content then you can take the fast track to plugging your survival safety security and overall emergency preparedness gaps all the things that you need help on that class that course content is going to be able to help you with that use the link below or go over to tiny survival masterclass.com and don't forget to subscribe wherever you're seeing or hearing this content we greatly appreciate that and help us out and share it with somebody you know that could benefit from it 
because that's going to be incredibly useful to them and you'll feel good about yourself for helping them out like we're doing our best to feel good about helping you so thank you for that we greatly appreciate it i think that's it everybody keep it simple be positive and stay sharp for your convenience i've placed links to everything mentioned in the video description make sure you smash that like button and click the bell icon to get notified when we post new survival and preparedness content. To support this channel and encourage us to continue to create new videos and sweet, innovative new gear, go check out our new line of MSK1 knives and EDC gear over at ultimatesurvivaltips.com. And last but not least, don't forget to go check out our five-star rated podcast, The Survival Show, on all major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Okay, this is David. I hope to see you on the other side. And remember, be prepared because you never know.